Hi, it's Steve. Today we'd like to show you how to change the cold control kit on your refrigerator. It's a really easy job. Let me show you how we do it. Now before we begin this repair, the first thing we'll need to do is to turn off power to the refrigerator. So either pull it far enough forward that you can unplug it, or locate the electrical panel, turn off the appropriate breaker, or remove the appropriate fuse. Now once we've disconnected power, we can then open up the refrigerator door and we suggest that you remove all of the items on the upper shelf and perhaps remove that shelf as well to give yourself a little more room to work on the unit. Now with the upper shelf removed, we now have lots of access to the retaining screws that hold that control assembly, which runs on both sides. All that needs to come off. So we're going to begin by removing a single screw in the right rear corner. These are normally a quarter inch hex head screw. And once we have that screw removed, we can then grasp that housing at the back and just pull it down slightly and tilt it away from the back of the control panel. And then we'll just set that aside. Now next, we'll remove a single screw at the back of the housing on the left side, just behind the damper. And next, we'll remove a screw right behind the control panel on the left side. And you may wish to remove the light bulb for this one, give you a little more access to it. You may also have to use a shorter nut driver to reach in there. So loosen that one. Now all that remains is the three screws across the front. And then finally the one in the center. Now support the weight of that housing as you remove that last screw. Allow that to tilt down. Well, next, I want to disconnect the wire harness in the upper left corner here. There is a locking tab on both the bottom and the top that you'll need to depress. Just unplug that. Then we're going to carefully pull the rear of that housing towards the center. Pull the capillary tube all the way out and then tilt that housing down. And lastly, we need to disconnect the water lines at the back of the filter assembly. Now, to release these water lines, you simply just press down on those blue collars while pulling out on the tube. If water continues to flow out of those, you'll need to turn off your water supply, but it should not load on its own. Then we'll take that whole assembly, we'll set it on a suitable work surface, and we can change the part. Now with the housing on a suitable work surface, our next step will be to remove the control knob. Simply pull it straight off, and we'll set that aside. Now next we need to release this little locking tab to remove the old control. So just carefully pry that back enough so that that tab clears the metal portion of the control and tilt up on it. Once you've cleared that plastic tab, we can pull it away from the opposite side. And then you can lift it out of the way. At this point, we can remove the wire terminals from the existing control. And then we need to feed that capillary tube that runs all along that housing and exits into the freezer area. We need to pull that all the way out. So just take note of how it's routed through the housing.
particularly the sleeve that encompasses that little heater. We need to make sure that we pull that carefully out of there. And use caution around this styrofoam housing for the damper. Quite often they will break apart when you disassemble that refrigerator. We need to make sure that if it does crumble in any place that you tape that up afterwards before we put it back together. There may be some adhesive tape in there to hold that in place, so carefully move that out of the way. And then pull the control out. We can then discard the old one. Now when installing the new control, you'll note that the wire terminals may be in a different position and it's not critical which of the two terminals you attach the wire to. So as long as you have the orange and the black on the end, the ground wire will attach to the terminal that is connected to the metal case. It's a smaller terminal. And then we're going to tuck that tab into the opening. And next we'll pull that plastic tab just back enough to drop the opposite side in place and then allow it to latch over top of it. Make sure we tuck those wire harnesses out of the way. And then very carefully we will thread that capillary tube through the channel along the side of that housing, being very careful that we don't kink that tubing. prevent any sharp bends. and then slide it into that plastic sleeve. And that should just barely protrude from the end of that plastic sleeve. And tuck the excess down in below the damper housing. We can reinstall the knob on the new control. And there's a narrow and wide side on that knob, so it'll only go on one direction. Okay, make sure we have no kinks in that tubing or in the any pinches in the wiring. We're going to reinstall that housing, making sure that we get that capillary tube into the opening at the back of the refrigerator wall. So next we'll reconnect the two water lines. We simply push them all the way into that housing.
And then just give them a little tug back to make sure that the locking wings pull back with it and lock them in place. And next, we're going to guide that capillary tube into a little round opening just at the bottom of that oval. Now next, we're going to make sure that we install that capillary tube into a small opening at the bottom of that rectangular opening into the freezer. Just press it into that tube and up into place. Next, we'll reconnect that wire harness. So line it up and then make sure that both locking tabs engage. At that point, we're going to tilt that housing up into position and then just support it with a single screw in the front center. Just make sure the screw is protruding through the top, line it up with the opening. And that will hold it in place. Now next we'll take the longer screw to the very back. We need to make sure that we can press that damper housing firmly into place. Make sure that that will lay flush against the freezer wall. Take that long screw. Make sure it actually goes through the opening at the back. And lines up. And next we'll install the one right behind the control panel. And again, you may need to use a shorter nut driver. You may also wish to use a magnetic one so that we can line that screw up with the opening at the back of the housing. And as you tighten it up, you should see it close up that gap between the sidewall and the housing. Next, we can put the other two across the front. Tighten the center one. Now when installing the cover for the water lines, first of all, I want to make sure that the water lines straddle that opening for the screw. And you'll also note that there's a little plastic tab that lines up with a small opening in the ceiling of the refrigerator. So make sure we line those up and as well hook those two tabs at the front of the housing into the opening at the back of the control panel. So fit it into the back of the control panel first. Make sure the water lines fit around that center post. And then press it up into place, lining up that locking tab. Sure that that housing fits flush at the top, that the locating pin went into place. So now reinstall the light bulb if you removed it. And now we're ready to put the shelving back in place. We're now ready to reconnect the power and your repair is complete.